before you were even born. Is that right? Yes. And Christ died for that sin. Is that right? Yes. So is your sin taken care of? Yes. Yes. See, our problem isn't with justification. Our problem is with sanctification. <laughs> the holy living thing. And what we fail to realize is that it's the same thing as justification. It's what God does in me. But I think, no, this is what I have to do. And when I don't do it, then I know God doesn't like me. And I have to remember by faith that God loves me. And God loved me so much that He gave His only begotten Son that I should not perish. Yes. But that I should have eternal life. Amen. And that in Christ, I have all of that. The riches, the grace, and the glory of God Almighty. Amen. Listen, don't let this world darken your enthusiasm for what Christ has done. Amen. 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 Donald, what time does that say? 12, 18. How'd you do that, Kylie? You ain't even looking at the face. <laughs> oh, you turn around and look at it. Yeah. Preacher, they won't fire if you go over ten more minutes. If something happens here and God really shows up, I think we'd get excited. You might go for three hours. Amen. <laughs> You're talking about something that's alive and it brings life to humanity. Amen. Legal justification is made effective by faith alone. This means that the believer who accepts Christ is clothed with the perfect righteousness of Christ which is known as imputed righteousness, so that as far as God is concerned, never forget this, as far as God is concerned, maybe not as far as I'm concerned or you're concerned or what others think about us, but as far as God is concerned, we are qualified for heaven now. Amen. Right now. Amen. Hallelujah. And in the judgment, oh, don't that make you afraid? Not at all. Thank you. It shouldn't, because in Christ... You are qualified, now and in the judgment. And folks, this is the basis of our peace. Turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This peace is that peace that surpasses all understanding. This is the peace that God allows you to have even though your world is falling apart. This is the peace that allows you to come before God's throne boldly. No matter what has happened to you in the week, because in Christ you stand justified. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, don't you think it would have been a hard thing for Peter to actually see Christ after the resurrection? Yes. <clears throat> Did you realize that after Jesus ascended into heaven and Peter, <clears throat> Peter had to walk the streets of Jerusalem, don't you think all those people in that town remembered what he did? told that people would crow when he walked down the street, right? right? And he had to have and find peace with that. How was he able to handle that? Because he understood where he stood in Christ. He understood that that mistake and that sin, and it was a big one, didn't define who he was. That wasn't going to be him the rest of his life. And brothers and sisters, that's what I want to tell you today. Your sin does not have to define who you are. Your mistakes of the past do not have to define what you're going to do tomorrow. Christ defines who you are. Christ defines your worth. You're standing inside of God. And God loves you. If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? That's how much God loves you. Amen. <laughs> That is the power of the gospel. The doctrine of justification by faith. So Paul will say in Thessalonians, we don't have to mourn like the unbelievers who have no hope. It gives us the courage to do things that we never could have done. 
And I thank God that He has given us this power. So justification by faith does not stop there. It goes beyond that. It further teaches that because you have become a child of God, God now sends His Holy Spirit to indwell the believer so that you and I become partakers of the divine nature. What's the divine nature? Ricky, what did you say? Holy Spirit. Now, what kind of nature do we have outside of Christ? Corruptible and fallen, right? And it is worthy of death. For the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Surely die, right? So we need a new nature. And this is what Christ gives us through the indwelling of His Holy Spirit. We now have access to the power of God Almighty. And that, as the Bible says, the same way Jesus overcame when He was on this earth, we have that same power available to us. And that if we, by faith, come to Him, He will not turn us away. So that you and I may become partakers of the divine nature. Why? That we may escape the corruption that is in the world. He goes on to write that by the corruption in this world, he doesn't mean Hollywood, uh, the culture, and all those other things. The corruption of this world is in us because our nature, our very nature is corrupt. And will remain corrupt until the second coming of Christ when this corruption puts on incorruption. God sends us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. As Paul will explain in Romans chapter 5, because of this, we are standing under the umbrella of what starts with a G? Grace. Grace. Don't you love that word? Grace. Unmerited favor of God. Standing under grace. So when God looks at you, God is not angry. God's not looking at your sin. He sees his child, just like he saw Jesus. So when God sees you, he looks at you with the eyes of love. But that doesn't melt your heart. That doesn't draw you close to him and, and make you want to get even closer to him. I don't know what else to say. We are standing in grace. Not only do we have peace with God, we have been reconciled to Him, but we have available the power of God through the indwelling Spirit, which means that now we can live lives that are well-pleasing to God. That is the power of justification by faith, or the fruits of justification by faith. In other words, Jesus said, and turn with me to John, this is where we'll close. John chapter 15 we're going to look at verses 4 and 5 and then 7 and 8. John 15, verses 4 and 5 and 7 and 8. This is the key to having that power living in you. John 15, verses 4 and 5 and then 7 and 8. Jesus said, remain in me and I will remain in you. So what are we told here to do? To remain or abide. Abide in me, remain in me, and I will remain in you. So the secret to victorious Christian living is based on what? Abiding in Christ. Jesus. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me or abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do what? Not me. Christ is our all in all. This is why you cannot give 99.9% .9 of your heart to Christ and leave that other percentage to yourself. It's either all for Christ or it's nothing. And that's why the church is in the state of Laodicea today. Yep. Because we have divided hearts. Yes. Choose ye this day who you will serve. 
Choose this day who you're going to give your full heart to. We say we don't worship idols. We don't have statues in our house. There's a lot of things we bow down to. 100%. God wants all of your heart. Why? Because you have to give that to Him. Because that's the only way He can work His justification and His sanctification out in your life. Amen. It's either all Him or it's not Him at all. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. And I always thought that's a strange, strange thing, because I ask God for a lot of things, and I get hardly any of them. <laughs> but then I read the text that yeah, you don't get because you ask amiss. And what you get, you use it on yourself. Okay? But I can tell you again that what I ask God for the blessing of others, God has answered that prayer every time. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you what? Bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Brothers and sisters, this is where we'll end today. We'll pick it up next week. Thank you for your patience and your time. You go through this week, again, look at this book, the book of Romans. Look at the book of Galatians. Please come to the Sabbath school class. Avail yourself of the teachings that are going to be brought to you. The closing hymn this morning is in number 341.
the privilege of being able to hear your word, to be able to know that you love us so much that you have done everything to save us. And Father, I pray that you will melt our hearts, that we may fall in love with Jesus all over again. <clears throat> Father, I pray that as we continue to go through the book of Galatians and continue to study the book of Romans, that the changes and the revivals that were brought in the past, the same will happen here. Father, I pray that you ignite in us a fire that will burn so brightly that those that we meet will want to know what's made this change in you, and they'll want to meet Jesus Christ as well. Amen. Father, use us. Let us be that generation that will be able to stand in your sight without a mediator, that we can see Jesus come back in glory to take us home. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, before everybody leaves, um, if you would please just wait for a moment. I want to make sure that you are in touch with um, the person that needs to talk to you about positions we have. Um, Gary um, Pickering, you need to speak to Ricky um, if you haven't already. Um, then uh, Boone, uh, if you could please talk to Carl. Um, Judy, we got you covered. Um, Margaret, um, talk to um, Carl. Uh, the McIntyres, are they here? No. No. Okay. Um, Kyla, you need to talk to Linda. Alita, you need to talk to Linda. Um, Patty Kelschner, you need to talk to Carl. Uh, Navalette, if you would talk to me. Um, Tarsia, are you here today? No. No. Um, uh, Patty Dove, I need to talk to you. Um, Janet Pickering, if you would please talk to Linda if you have not already. Um, Joyce. Um, Diane, you're talking about Linda Reinhardt, right? Linda Reinhardt, yes. Linda Reinhardt, yes. yes. Linda Reinhardt. yeah, right. Um, Joyce, I don't see her here. here today either. Um, and Lois, I need to talk to you. So that's it. So if you would please um, try to get, yes. One more announcement. I just want to tell everyone on their way out, we had a lot of baked goods left over from yesterday. They're out in the kitchen on the table. Please go out there and help yourself on the way out. Thank you. Thank you. If you please get with everyone before you leave so that we can get this taken care of.